What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to break down the Photoshop filter menu. And this is going to be right here at the top under filter. Now, I have another video that actually breaks down what all these filters do. So this video is going to be real quick. It's not even going to be that long. It's just going to explain basically what these are. But I'm going to leave a link to the other filter video that goes through every single one and shows you what they are and how to use them and how to change the settings on them. So if you're interested in that, make sure to watch the other video. And before we get into it, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, turn on the post notifications. Also comment down below with all your questions. And with that, let's hop right into it. All right, so the first option you got, this is just gonna be like a quick shortcut to the last filter that you used. So this is the last one I used. So you can basically do it again if you want. Convert for smart filters. If we make a copy of this layer and right click and rasterize it, then we can come and click convert for smart filters. And all this does, it turns it into a smart object. So you can do that, or you can just right click and go to convert to smart object. It does the same thing. Next, we got neural filters. And this opens up a whole nother window. And it has all your filters right here. You're gonna have to um, install them. I already installed all of them. And there's also a wait list for other ones coming up. But all you got to do once you install it, say we turn this one on and then it opens up the settings. I'm not going to break down what all these do. You can pause it and take a look at some of them. Or you can just watch my other filter video. After that, we got filter gallery. And this same thing, it's another window. And it's got more like artistic filters. And there's a lot you can play around with. I'm not going to break them all down like I said. But there's probably about 50 of them you can choose from. There's brush strokes, sketching. You got texture ones like grain, mosaic, stained glass. And then you have the settings on the right hand side. And you can also add multiple to the same image. So say I wanted cut out. And then I can add another one and keep adding them. All right, so that's filter gallery. Next, we got adaptive wide angle. And this lets you correct lens distortions that can happen from using wide angle lenses. And you can uh, quickly straighten lines that appear curved in panoramas or fisheye in wide angle photos. You can turn what type of correction you want here. And then adjust the settings over here. After that, we got camera raw filter. And this opens up its own window and provides tools to repair images. You can adjust exposure, color, granularity, vignetting, optics. You can sharpen, white balance. Uh, it's also got red eye spot removal. You also got a histogram at the top. And when you open up these, it shows all the settings you can change. You got color grading, optics, you got fringe. You can even mess with the geometry, vertical, horizontal, rotating the image. It's got some effects, grain and vignetting, and then calibration finally at the bottom. And all that, what I just explained, is just what's on the top here in the Edit tab. You also have a Healing Brush tab and Clone Stamp. You have a Mask tab, a Red Eye Removal. Then you got some presets here. And then finally, there's some extra settings you can play around with. And then down at the bottom, you got the Zoom and the Hand tool. You can toggle the grid sampler and put a grid on the picture. 
I mess with the settings on that also. But that's the camera raw filter. There's a lot of things you can do with it. Again, check out my other video because it's going to explain every single option, what it does. Uh, then we got lens correction. And this fixes lens issues like distortion and perspective. Uh, since every lens is uniquely designed, the lens corrections are applied depending on what lens model you got. So you can come over here and search your camera's make, model, and the lens model. And then it'll give you some lens profiles. So you just look for a Canon 50D. And we'll search all lens models. Then you'll see what lenses are available for that camera. And if you have one of those, you just click it. And you'll see it removes distortions compared to that lens. There's also a custom tab. You can come and remove distortion with these sliders and transform it horizontal and vertical. On the left hand side, you got some tools remove distortion, straighten, and move grid tool. Then you have the same hand and zoom tool, like always. And when you're done, you just click OK. After that, we got liquify. And this selectively distorts an image by letting you push, pull, rotate, reflect, pucker, and bloat any area of an image. You have your tools on the left hand side. If you look here, it's got a grid on it. You can change, turn this off if you want, but I kind of like it. And it shows you like how you exactly you're distorting it. So we make his head real big. You can just push it out reconstruct tool this one just undoes whatever uh, liquefying you've done smooth is kind of like the reconstruct does pretty much the same thing twirl clockwise obviously you see what it's doing it's twirling it kind of like water going down a drain all right so pucker brings it in like sucks it into the middle and then blow does the opposite it like bloats it out push left just literally pushes everything to the left freeze mask if you click this then you come and do a different tool it won't mess with anything that is painted red so that's a mask that you can have everything stay the same in so then you can uh, edit around the edges if you wanted to. Thaw mask just erases it. Um, this face tool works for if you have a portrait image. And then you got the hand and zoom tool uh, over here. I'm not going to go over these too much, but there's brush tool options. If you have a face, you can actually move different parts of the face because the algorithm will register it's a face. And you can change like eye size, nose, mouth. Um, you can make their forehead bigger, smaller, chin height. There's a lot of options to change in there. Load mesh options. This is where you can load and save meshes. Mask. There's all types of different masks you can add. This is kind of like the Pathfinder options in Adobe Illustrator. You got Replace add to subtract intersect and invert you also have some view options and this is where you can show the mesh and the guides if you want also the mask and the backdrop and then reconstruct options this is for your reconstruct brush tool and that's a quick version of liquify again i'll get into plenty detail with it in the other video Next, we got Vanishing Point, and you'll see this is grayed out. So what you got to do for this is you have to have a raster image. If your image is a smart object, just right-click on it and go to Rasterize Layer. Then select it, and you can come here to Filter, Vanishing Point. So the real quick explanation of what this does is it allows objects and edits in your image to be scaled and oriented according to a perspective plane. So you can draw planes with the Create Plane tool. 
Say we draw this here. And you'll see it's blue. If you move it and it gets yellow, it'll still work, but not good. And if it's red, that means you can't have it. You got to adjust it like that. You can't have that. So you just keep moving around till it gets blue. And the more lines, the better. That means it's registering more of that perspective. If you get back on the create plane tool and you come to the center point here or here, and you click and drag, you can make another plane that's different, like how this is coming at a different angle. And then you see we have two planes. Then we can do it again. Click here, make another plane. And we got three different planes, one, two, three. And we can um, copy and paste stuff onto there. We can use the clone stamp or the brush tool. If we click the clone stamp, we can come here at like a corner of a window. We can hold alt and click, and now you'll see where the green crosshair is. That's where we'll start drawing. So if we wanted to add it over here, we can paint and add in a window from somewhere else or a door or whatever you want to do. Um, you can do all types of stuff. We can even keep coming all the way down here and just make it look like the other building. Uh, then we got the eyedropper and the measure tool, like always, and the hand and the zoom tool. There is some options up here. You got show edges and measurements. You can also render your grids to Photoshop. And these are your grids, the planes that you drew. Um, you got some export options and then some other things down here. When you're selecting on the tool, you can change the settings of that tool up at the top. See how it changes for each tool I click. And that's Vanishing Point in a quick and simple um, tutorial. Now for these ones, I'm just going to breeze right through them. I know it's been a little bit of a longer video. I'm sorry about that, but it's a lot to explain in these. So let's just start out with 3D. Um, generate Bump and Normal Map. But then we got Blur. There's a ton of different blurs here, and there's also blurs in the blur gallery. It says all these, but if you just click any of them, it opens up, and then you can choose which one you want to do. Field, iris, tilt, path, and spin blur. Then you got some effects down here. Click OK at the top when you're done. Uh, then we got distort. And obviously all these do different distortions on your image and transforms them. Noise, this is for different ways of adding and taking away noise, depending on the ones that you choose. Pixelate, these are more like artistic type of uh, filters. Render, for the top ones to work, you have to be on a raster image. And these basically render whatever it says, a flame, a picture frame, a tree, clouds, difference clouds, fiber, lens flare, and different lighting effects. Then you got sharpen, and all these are different ways of sharpening up detail in your image. Then stylize, um, these are more also artistic type of filters. You got things like oil paint, emboss, find edges, solarize. Uh, then we got video. There's just two of them, deinterlace and NTSC colors. And last but not least, we got the other section. High pass, I use a lot. Also minimum and maximum sometimes. Um, but those are all the filters. Uh, guys, like I said, I can't stress it enough. If you want the in-depth uh, breaking down exactly what everything is and I'll actually use it and show you what it does check out the other video I'm gonna put links in the description and also at the top throughout this video if you have any questions put them in the comments below and subscribe to the channel it really helps us out thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one